everyone, it's Jolene. Welcome back to the Home Stitchery Decor YouTube channel. In today's video, I am going to show you my ultra super trick for getting more done in my studio. If you just watched the studio tour, you did see uh, that I had, did have an AccuQuilt studio machine set up here. I've now put that away, um, but it is what I use to cut these two and a half inch strips for my rugs. And then you did see the pile here that is the uh, Soup Bowl Cozies. And so the Soup Bowl Cozies have been cut out with the Studio Cutter and the Soup Bowl Cozy die. And then, uh, so there's fabric and then there's this Pellon Wrap and Zap batting. I will put links in the video description for anything that you want to purchase that I use. Uh, pretty much everything I use, you can buy um, through an affiliate link that I'll share in the description. So. The thing is, is that I was getting stinking busy, right? <laughs> so, 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 so busy and I want to grow even more. So the only way that I can grow is to either uh, use my time more efficiently or pay somebody else to do the work for me. So I'm doing a little bit of both. I have a team of sewists that are sewing the strips of my rugs around the batting. So the strips I cut myself with the AccuQuilt Studio, I cut the batting strips as well. They, I use the Studio die cutter. It's uh, the five inch wide one. So two and a half inches at five strips wide. And then uh, I lay out all of the colors that I'm going to use. And I select the colors and essentially make my own jelly rolls. And then I hand those over to the sewing team and they miter the strips end to end. And then they clip off the excess and then they sew them uh, doubled around this batting and they give them to me back um you know wrapped up nicely so that's fine so that's a huge amount of time off my hands but i also need to uh sew the round and round part of it um i haven't found anybody yet that uh can sew the round and round as quick as i can and as neatly and as it has to be perfect um so i'm still doing the round and round part myself and I also have to sew these soup bowl cozy. So I thought to myself, why don't I set up a little station here where I can sew left and right? So I have two foot pedals underneath and there's going to be two machines doing two different projects at the same time. So this machine here is a senior confidence quilter and it's got uh, a swirly stitch like this, right? So not a zigzag, but an actual nice big swirl. So I'm going to sew an X on these uh, soup bowl cozies. Um, to fasten the fabric down to the actual batting. And then while I'm doing that, I am going to be sewing a rug on this machine. So it's going to take a minute to get things going and set up properly. Um, you know, so you kind of get a little bit of a flow because I'm sewing on two machines with two different pedals at the same time. I haven't even found my pedal yet. Okay, so here's this pedal here. You can see that one's working. This one's working. Everything's set up. And I'll just push my thread back through because now, of course, I had to pull it to the front, right? Just by pushing that one time. Okay, so I'm going to put the uh, presto foot down there and I'm going to start with this one because uh, this is the project that's going to take the most attention from me. This has to be absolutely perfect. This one I can go fast, slow, fast, slow, um, let it sit while I'm working on this one and then go back to it. But essentially, uh, because I am doing two at the same time, it does speed my process up a whole bunch. Okay, and then just got a couple loose threads here, which can happen. Nobody's perfect. Uh, so to start the rugs, I fold them in threes on the first color strip to make sure that they're uh, basically one color in the center of the rug. And I've done this, I, I think maybe 50 times on my YouTube channel. So you can see me do this all the time. So the folded edge is gonna go to the left, fold it over. Your folded edge now is gonna go to this puffy edge. And we're gonna put this on a, the widest zigzag that we can find on our machine. This is a Singer Heavy Duty machine. Um, and I've been using this Singer Heavy Duty to sew these rugs for forever. It's got quite a bit of oomph to it and it can get into the batting no problem. Now, how I start the rugs is I never start right at the edge. I always push the edge past the uh, where the needle's gonna go first and I reverse and then come forward. So I make sure that everything's tacked down really well. You don't wanna be missing an edge. So get yourself off to a good start. Now, when you're feeding this in, this has to be loosey-goosey. 
and you can't be pushing or pulling on this in any direction. So this is where um, this does get a little bit tricky for me. Maybe I'll adjust my bottom in my chair. <sighs> so I'm nice and comfortable. And uh, yeah, hopefully I can talk my way through this one. So, okay, we're off to the races. We've got a huge pile of soup bowl cozies here and one jelly roll rug we're going to do. Okay, and it's probably going to get loud. And oh, I want to tell you, the truth of this is, is over in this other corner here is my Cricut machine. And typically I have my Cricut running at the same time as these two projects. Uh, because of the noise factor, I'm not going to do this in that video or do that in this video. Um, but typically I have that running as well so that I can actually three times uh, my effort here with the work. Okay, so we're going to get going on this one and we've got it set uh, this one is selection number 16. I have all my settings here already, and we're just going to let it rip. So like I said, this one uh, machine here with the jelly roll is the one I want to concentrate on the most. And just out of the corner of my eye, I'm making sure that this one is feeding in straight. It needs to feed in, you know, straight-ish. It doesn't have to be absolutely... 1000% perfect, uh, but you definitely don't want it going cattywanka on you either. So, and the first few rounds of the jelly roll rug, if you've ever done the rug, you know that these are the most important ones. So I'm gonna make sure that I've got everything I can uh, going as far as the corners are going. Everything lined up. I don't wanna be fixing anything after the fact. So if this one has to sit here for a minute in the corner, then that's what's going to happen. I'm going to trim off my first uh, starter stitch threads here. Now, of course, as this rug gets bigger, I will be able to concentrate uh, more on what's happening to the left side of me. But for right now, we'll just do it as quickly as we can. Now, this sure beats helping, um, or sorry, hiring another helper right now. I just, I have to watch my money quite closely uh, so that I can continue to grow my business. And uh, part of the ways I'm going to grow my business is with YouTube. I cannot believe, I absolutely cannot believe, I checked this morning and there were 814 subscribers on my YouTube channel, which is absolutely fantastic. So if you like these kind of videos, uh, hit the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, leave a nice comment. And uh, when I say leave a nice comment, I I honestly just delete the last few comments. So there's no point in leaving them. Nobody's going to see them any quicker than I can. They're going to be gone. I had a lady last week leave me a message that said she really liked my tutorials. Uh, but she thought that I should not be mentioning links in my tutorials. And I thought, um, <laughs> this is my business and I can do whatever I want with it. And if you don't like it, you don't have to watch the video. You can just scroll by. You don't need to leave a comment about what you think I should or shouldn't be putting um, in my video. I use the, um, if people want to shop from a link, that's fine. They, they're not obligated to. I give a ton of free content uh, with all the links that I share. And if you are on my newsletter, I also give links to coupons for products like, <coughs> excuse me, I don't know why I can't get a video through a video without copying. I give uh, links to products like Cricut, AccuQuilt, Sewing Machines Plus. I give you all the latest DL coupons. And some girls are gonna wanna make this kind of stuff themselves or even start a business and it's expensive so go ahead and use those links if you uh, first of all you might save some money and second of all you're gonna pay me um, for making all this free content which is fabulous or just go and look and then if you want to go to the website all on your own go ahead and do that if you don't if you don't feel the need to you know support what I'm doing here I'm fine with it I'm going to find enough people that like me either way. 
Okay, so we're going to switch this one out. Now this thread here is has to be cotton. It's 100% cotton thread. And I'm using a 9014 needle on the Singer Confidence Quilter machine. And this other machine is um, a 116 Schmetz jeans needle. And I'm using 40 weight poly thread. I pre-wound a bunch of my bobbins for this project so I can get it going as quickly as possible. All right, now we're really gonna get going here. I can, I can feel my coffee has kicked in. So essentially right now I'm making two different products. I would normally be making three because my Cricut would be going off in the corner. I have my washer and dryer going. I have my dishwasher going upstairs. I have something in the crock pot. And I'm sewing on two different machines at the same time. So when I say that I am busy and I am trying my hardest, I am literally trying my hardest. So this rug in the foreground is in the Spring Flowers collection on my site. And these um, soup bowl cozies that I'm sewing over here, they're not even on the site yet. Uh, there is an Easter towel that has some of that fabric in it, but the soup bowl cozies, I haven't, um, I haven't loaded onto the site yet. So if you are on the site, you can go, uh, to, just on the homepage, you can search all the collections, or you can go to uh, home and then catalog and you'll see all of the products uh, by type. So it'll be all the rugs, all the soup bowl cozies, all the dish towels, all the dish drying mats, all the hand crochet dish cloths. Um, there's a Christmas section there. And then you'll notice that I have a bunch of collections that are print to order products. All of the designs on those print to order products are all my own designs and there's more coming which is exciting uh, it just keeps scaling and growing i own about 20 uh different designs that i've uh worked on to put on products and as this year progresses i will be uh, launching more and more of those uh products as we go so another great benefit of joining the newsletter is as soon as you sign up with your email address, you are automatically entered into the Dish Towel of the Month giveaway if you live in Canada or the United States, you're eligible to win it. And I will ship it to you free of charge, completely free of charge. Uh, so there was a winner last month of the gray and white uh, Dish Towel giveaway. I've sent her an email and she should check her junk email box. I can't give her uh, name out without permission, of course, um, but she did win it. And I will be putting up um, the next, ne I've already photographed it, but today I'm, I'm just a, a wee bit behind, so it hasn't actually flipped over into the, um, the newsletter picture there yet. Um, but there is another uh, dish towel for April, and it's going to be the teal um, and black towel that matches these two full cozies. It's got some chickens on it, and the towel itself has some Easter bunnies. So that's gonna be the April one. You don't have to purchase anything to be qualified, and you can opt out of emails at any time, and this is not affiliated at all with any other platform. We have to say that over and over and over again. So if something goes wrong with this and you're unhappy, don't message YouTube, they don't care. They will just forward it to me. So um, the amount of emails on my list determines the chances of me winning. And it's just a random selection of a random email off the list. And then I just contact you and say, hey, guess what, you want a dish towel? This is something fun to do. I mean, my gosh, we don't have enough fun these days, in my opinion. There's just, there is not enough fun. There's work and there's more work and there's pay bills 
and I'm gonna do my little part with my dish towel giveaway to brighten up somebody's day. If you're new to the channel, I'm from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and I started out with the rugs. So these rugs, I've sewn hundreds of them now. I teach them all over YouTube. There is a pattern for it. I've never used the pattern for it, uh, but you can get a pattern. I believe it's from, I, I think it's RJ Designs. Roma Quilts, I'm pretty sure it's RJ Designs. But anyway, I've never used the pattern. I know she does a bunch with the Jelly Roll stuff. I don't have time to look at it. Um, I do rugs and tea towels and dish drying mats and everything. I saw a, a rug one day and thought that looks just like my auntie's rug that she had, you know, for forever. Um, so I thought, okay, well, I'm going to try to teach myself how to do that. And it, <laughs> I ran out of bobbin thread here. It, it actually wasn't that hard for me. So I didn't actually use um, a pattern at all. But if you are the person that needs a pattern, don't come to me. I don't sell them. Support the pattern maker. That's where you go. All right. I just sew them on YouTube. <laughs> and I sell them. I should sew them at the farmer's market too. Everybody asks me how they're done all the time. I don't know. Maybe there's not... Um, I don't know if I could do that. I don't think there's like any, an inch of space left in my car <laughs> when I'm loading up my car for the farmer's market. I have a, a 10 by 10 tent that I use for the summer markets. And if you're in Calgary, Alberta, I go to the Bears Paw Lions Farmer's Market every second week. And I go to the Millerville Egg Society Farmer's Market every second week. And it's on the same weekend that I go. So one is on Saturday and one is on Sundays. And I'm in a couple of stores. One is in Rocky Mountain House, Alberta, and one is in Kindersley, Saskatchewan. So if you're ever looking for my products, you can head on over to the website and right at the top of the page, um, it'll say, follow me to a market. And on that page is a list of all of the venues that I am at or that carry my product. And you can just uh, pick which flyer you want to go to. And once you pick on the, like click on the flyer, um, up pops up the dates and locations and even the GPS driving instructions are right there in the um, in the address. You can click on the address and it'll GPS you right to where I'm at. hours that's the longest we've spent apart in nine years and uh, I decided I would get my butt in gear here and uh, make some YouTube videos so I've got on the same yellow shirt as the last video hope you don't mind hope you like it so the material I'm using is uh, premium quilt cotton it comes on uh, bolts and it's either, it goes between like 42 and 44 inches wide. And I just cut, um, I cut the fabric down to 13 inches and then I place it in the AccuQuilt Studio like, on the foam die. Uh, put the plastic on top of it and then run it through the steel rollers and my studio works so well that I can lay several layers of fabric on it do one pass and in that one pass I can cut 40 strips so essentially one jelly roll I can cut with each pass 
So I typically buy fabric in 10 coordinating colors and then I cut enough of each color to have 40 strips and then I rotate through the strips. So um, I don't know how many it works out to. So 10 by 40, like it's 10 rugs essentially, right? At the end of that. It doesn't take too long at all. And honestly, it's the best decision I ever made was to get this um, studio cutter. I know they're expensive. I know they're completely out of um, some people's reach. They do have the smaller Go versions or you can get in with it, um, like get in on it with a friend and share the dies or do um, do like a lending library with your friends or something for it because it's ridiculously expensive. And to be honest, I did not buy my studio cutter brand new. I was very, very, very fortunate that I was looking on a Facebook group for one and a very nice lady, very nice lady who follows along on, um, on all of my media. She actually messaged me and said, Hey, Jolene, I saw on Marketplace that there was a studio, a quilt studio in BC that was selling off their AccuQuilt studio and all their dies. And she didn't want to post the link in the group um, because it would have got snatched up. So she shared the link with me privately and then I messaged the studio. And when it arrived, um, they had to ship it to me. And you know, that stuff's really heavy, right? So they had to ship it to me in two boxes and I actually had to go to the post office and pick it up. Um, because the post office wouldn't deliver it. It was just too heavy. It was over their weight limit for delivery. Um, so I went and picked it up and she didn't even really, like she gave me a rough idea of what was there. And her price was so ridiculously low. I just said, yeah, okay, send it to me. I'll send you an e-transfer right now. Um, I don't mind who, whoever you choose to ship it with is fine by me. And when I got home and I added up everything she had sold me with all of the dyes and mats, it was $3,600, I think. And I paid her $240 plus the shipping. So I don't know if this was like somebody that was, you know, closing down a studio, um, and it was somebody that was helping the studio out. I don't know what the situation was, uh, but they were like, they didn't know what they had. Um, but lucky me, I got this thing and I have, you know, used it and paid it forward so many times uh, with projects that I've donated to businesses and stuff like that. Just, you know, just what a blessing. So, so, so grateful. I think there's 22 soup bowl cozies in this pile. Um, so there'll be 44 pieces of fabric. So when that pile's done, I will have 22 soup bowl cozies. I showed my husband that I had learned this and uh, he, he came in here. He came in through the, the side door over there. If you saw their studio uh, tour just a minute ago, that's uh, that's where it comes in from. And he just, he stood there and paused and he looked at me. He was like, that is ridiculous. <laughs> so me sewing on two machines at the same time, which I could actually do much quicker when I'm not filming a YouTube video, if you can imagine. Because I am finding this quite distracting to talk and sew on two machines. I want your rug to be flat, flat, flat. So I don't want to be pushing or pulling on anything. I can see there's a little bit of a curve here. And so on the next run, I'm going to uh, just reduce the tension on this one here a little bit. Because I definitely don't want a bowl. I want a rug. I want a flat rug.
Okay, you can see how this works. How lovely this is going to be. Like I said, I'll put some links in the video description. Or maybe I'll even just link right to the blog post on how to make jelly roll rugs. And then all the links for uh, the thread, the sewing machine, blah, blah, blah. They're all in there. And then I also have a how to make a lot of money making soup bowl cozies where I do all of the math in a blog post as well. So it walks you through all of the options uh, for the AccuQuilt Studio Systems. Um, it talks about the price of batting and then it breaks down the costs for you as well for um, how much you can sell them for. So if anybody finds that helpful, I will put those links in the videos for you. Okay, so now you can see what's happening here is I'm having to lift the rug up around this other sewing machine. And so what I do typically is I move this machine just a little shuffle over this way. So there's an extra inch. And I'm just going to sew one more because this is the last of this color. I'll do this one super quick. And then I'm going to trim off all these um, just so I don't have a big pile of them. And then I'm going to push my machine backwards so I've got just a little bit more room for this rug here. Here we go. And here's my big pile. I'm just going to turf this off over to the other uh, counter and push this one back a little bit. So what happens with that now is I might have to, um, you know, snip this pile before um, I get to the number 22. I might have to halve it there'll be a big pile piling up behind this machine and then once there's a pile piling up there uh, the front has nowhere to push through to and it can go catawanka on me definitely don't want that to happen so there's a bunch of prep work to get the sequel cozies um, you know, the cut and then put onto these piles of batting. But once you've got that set up, it's really not that hard. If you've got any dexterity whatsoever to push your foot down on the pedal and let that uh, curly switch go or curly stitch go through. And then once, once they're done the first time, I always make sure that I snip them all off and I make this pile again, but I make sure that when I'm doing it, I have um, all of the first half of the X going one way. And then when I pick them up, I can just put them back into the machine with this hand without looking too much to see, because you definitely don't want to be doing that, um, you know, that swirly stitch twice on the same direction. So you want to make sure everything's facing the same direction. So if I do it consistently, um, where I stop sewing this rug for a minute and I, you know, grab the pile and line everything up, then it's consistent and I know that I'm not going to mess it up. And this one is coming to the end of the bobbin thread here right away. So I just want to be careful. Pay attention to when it's coming to the end. I don't like the bobbin thread pulling on the fabric. I try to catch it just at the end of it, if at all possible. And then I always keep a bowl. I don't know if you just saw me do that, but I always keep a bowl for thread wherever I'm working. Um, if I'm doing things at the ironing station, I have a bowl there and I just find them so easy the thread just slides right out of it and goes right into the garbage can and I have this uh, nice aesthetic going on here in my studio um, which I was only able to do really let's be honest because we renovated the studio all at the same time and I had just started my sewing business at the exact same time so it's uh was four years ago um 
I think it was about, well, it was February 19th, four years ago that I was super duper sick. And I had a massive surgery to take a tumor out of my tummy, which was um, an eight and a half hour surgery. It was supposed to be a three hour surgery, but it ended up that I was actually quite ill. And I had this um, massive tumor just packed into every crevice of my abdomen. And so I came home from that and, uh, you know, was really sick. So I thought, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? So this room down here needed to be renovated anyway, so my husband started working on that. And then of course, you know, a couple months into the plans of it, I was feeling a little bit better, so I was able to do most of the painting in here. And, um, you know, just an hour a day, like spread out during the entire day, I was able to do some painting and we got it together. And then um, I had decided, while I was laying in bed recovering that I absolutely wanted to have my own business where I could work from home. Partly because I didn't know if I was ever gonna feel any better and partly because I was just like, oh my gosh, I just about freaking died. And you know, I need to do something with my life that's happy and fun and uplifting and you know, that is just fun. Like everything's so freaking serious all the time and people with their drama and all this crap that goes on in the world. And I just was done with it. I'm like, I am so sick. I need to uh, get happy. So I did that. Now I'm much happier. <laughs> Imagine that. So now I get to work at home most of the time. And uh, within this next year, I'm sure it's going to switch to full time. But right now, um, a, I, this is more than a full time job. But I do work outside the house part time still. Just making sure, you know, that's my uh, my making sure money, making sure my bills are paid. And then every single penny that I earn from this business, I just keep rolling back into the business. So rolling into a new sewing machine, rolling into more fabric, rolling into designs, um, rolling into paying for bigger markets, hiring staff, um, getting ads running on Facebook so that I can... Um, grow my audience all that kind of fun stuff so I've learned a ton and it's super fun super fun is up uh, I've stopped crying so that helps because the very first rugs that I did I kid you not I absolutely cried they were awful and I've just slowly over time learned you know to calm down and buy good fabric like it might be one or two dollars more expensive a meter to buy, you know, a better fabric, but it's totally worth it for this project. Because if you use cheap fabric and cheap batting on these rugs, they just go like this, like every single time. So yeah, that's my, um, if you're, if, if you're new here, you haven't heard this policy before, but I have a, if you cry, you can always buy policy. So that's kind of fun. Okay. Now I'm not too keen on, um, working harder so this is my work smarter plan do the prep work up the front buy the good fabric have everything laid out and now turn on a video and once I'm done these projects I will have um, a rug made today I will have the crisscross sewn of these soup bowl cozies I will have a video made on YouTube. The washer and dryer have run a load of laundry. The dishwasher is running upstairs and the crock pot is running. So that is how I'm going to get more done here. Um, you can see that this project is going to take a little while longer today, uh, but I do have a meeting coming up. So I'm going to turn off the camera and get going for my meeting. I've got a little timer set up here on my uh, sewing machine to let me know when it's time to wrap it up for the day. But there's tons of videos on the channel. If you love it here, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and a nice comment, and we'll see you guys later.